This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Third, it was fair in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of narcotics division. The boss is Captain Gindon. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. It was 8.30 a.m. Juvenile division had turned over some of the uppers that were flooding the area. Uppers are amphetamine sulfate tablets, a dangerous personality destroying drug. It was up to us to choke off the flow. We'd been searching for a lead for weeks. It was beginning to look hopeless. a.m. Patrol division had picked up a user. Lieutenant Bob Kennedy brought him in to see us. Howie Frazier here's got something to say. I'd like you to hear it. He's charged with possession, amphetamine. He's been given his rights. Don't make it sound so big. This is the first time I've been busted. Yeah, but not the first time you've ever flown with co-pilots. Huh? So what? Everybody does it these no, days. No, Howie, not everybody. Meaning you? Meaning most of your generation. Yeah, sure, the squares. Maybe they're the smart ones. Think about that. I'll do it sometime. Do it now. Possession's a felony. You'll have plenty of time. In a cell? Not me. How do you figure that? I'm not some dumb dumb. I've got it all worked out. You have. I knew I'd get busted someday. I figured the odds. That's why I did something about it. Tell us what you did. I made sure I always had something going for me. An ace in the hole. And you're gonna play that ace now, is that it? Maybe. If you sweeten the pot. What's that mean? I told you, I've never been busted before. I don't want to be busted now. You already are. Tear up the ticket. Oh, no, not today. You haven't heard what I've got to say. That doesn't matter. You've been arrested and booked. Nothing changes that. I've heard hundreds of stories about the deals you guys make. I don't know anything about the stories you've heard, but we make no deals. Now, listen. I don't have a record. My slate's clean. A judge will take that into account. But I still go to jail? I'll be locked up? It's possible. Boy, I thought I had it all laid out. I'm even hoping you'll think what I've got is important. We'll let you know. All right. I tried to find out the name of the guy who sold me the uppers, but I couldn't. He never slipped. So I did the next best thing. What was that? He drives a white Dodge. I followed it. I know where he went. I memorized the address. What is it? 3245 Ascot Street. Is it important enough to put down? What was the license number? XBI 804. Is it important? Maybe. It's a lead, more than you got now. Well, I don't know. He could be just another small-time pusher. Yeah, but one thing's sure. Pushers get their supply somewhere. Yeah. Somebody makes the pills they sell. Eleven forty-five a.m. The man we were looking for had to be a big-time operator in narcotics. We didn't know if Howie Frazier's information would lead anywhere, but we ran it down. We drove over to the Ascot Street address. It was located in North Hollywood. Just a minute, ma'am. What do you mean, just a minute? What do you want? Who are you? We had the same question. We're police officers, lady. Oh. Well, I'm Thelma Benstead. I guess this looks sort of funny to you, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am, it does. Well, this is my house. I own it. I guess I have a right to break into it whenever I want to, haven't I? Yes, ma'am, if you own it. Well, I do. I waited until the lease ran out before I came over. I made sure I wasn't violating anybody's rights. You had the house leased, is that it? That's right. Two months ago, I notified the tenant I wasn't going to renew, that I wanted the house back. I've got a niece that wants it. I never received a reply to my letter, and I didn't receive a reply to the second one I sent either, or the third. So today, when the lease expired, I came over and found all the locks had been changed. Now, you can prove you own this place, can you? Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Who is the tenant? He said his name was Smith. Oh, I know. I didn't believe him either. But if he wanted to lie about his name, that was his business. He paid the rent in advance every six months. That satisfied me. You haven't told me why you're here yet. Well, we came to see this Mr. Smith. Well, he's not here. You think I'd be breaking in my own door if he was? Mind if we go in with it? Mind? I'll mind if you don't. As long as you're here, you might as well be witnesses in case I have to sue him for damaging the place. Come on. My goodness, it's a factory. Yes, ma'am, it's that. Just look at this place. It's
It's all covered with some kind of powder. What in the world were they making in here? We've got a pretty good idea, Miss Benstead. Now you stay right here. Amphetamine sulfate. Looks like commercial grade. 100 pounds in that box. Here's the cutting material. Milk sugar, lactose. Commercial type mixer. Portion control scales. And the pill machine. Single stroke type. Machine like this will produce 90 pills a minute. At street prices, that's about $770 an hour. Now, you figure 100 pounds of amphetamine sulfate and roughly 500 pounds of milk sugar, you'd have to have a computer to figure the size of the return. Amphetamine empties. Yeah. Plenty of them. Here's the shipping desk. I'd say there's about 700 pills in this bag. $100 worth. Well, here's your answer. Look at this. He didn't even open them. What's that, Miss Benstead? The letters I wrote to him, telling him I didn't want to renew the lease. I got them right here on this clipboard. You got anything? All addressed to occupant. Now, Miss Benstead, we'd like you to tell us everything you can about this man, Smith. I did. He came to sign the lease, paid the rent six months in advance, and went. I never saw him again. Did he give you a first name? Yes, he did. Michael. Michael Smith. What about the next six months' rent? He mailed it in cash. Could you describe him for us, please? Well, he was about an inch or so shorter than you are. Age 50, graying hair. It's difficult to describe him. He looked like so many other men. Anything unusual about the man? Anything at all you can remember about him? No, not that I can think of, except that he seemed very nice at the time. I had no idea he'd do something like this, make pills. Narcotics, aren't they? Dangerous drugs. Now, how was he dressed? Well, it was more than a year ago. I just don't remember. He was a handsome man. How do you mean that, Mrs. Benstead? Well, just that. He wasn't good looking, but he looked good. For his age, I mean. Especially in that car of his. What kind of car? Oh, I don't know anything about cars. It was one of those good-looking ones, you know, real sporty. It wasn't white, was it? White? I don't think so. Well, it might have been, or, or silver. It was some real light color. I'll call SID and get a stakeout team on the way. Right. Well, at least we've done some good, haven't we? We've closed down the pill factory. Yes, ma'am, but that's only half of it. Oh? Now we've got to find the man who ran it. I instructed Thelma Benstead on the methods of police procedures in a case of this nature. She agreed to cooperate. One ten p.m., the latent prints man arrived, along with two detectives. We briefed them, and they proceeded with their jobs to print and secure the residence. The gray-haired man in his 50s, not much to go on. Uh, looks like we got two possibilities. He'll come back to make more pills so we keep a stakeout on the place. And we check out the license number of that white Dodge. One twenty p.m., we ran a check on the license number. DMV told us it was registered to a Fred Watkins, 1612 Sycamore Street, North Hollywood. Yeah? Fred Watkins? That's right. I hope you're not selling something. You woke me up. Police officers, we'd like to talk to you. Oh. Well, come on in. What did I do, run a red light? You own a white Dodge license number XBI-804? Oh, well, yeah, it's downstairs. What's the matter? Something happened to it? Somebody hit it? It's all right, as far as we know. Well, what's the trouble, then? What are you here for? You lease a house at 3245 Ascot Street, do you? No, I live here. You know anybody at that address? I don't even know where Ascot Street is. Your car was seen there. Couldn't have been mine. Well, it was yours. You're kidding. It was followed there by one of the people you sold amphetamine to. Amphetamine? What's that? What do you do for a living, Fred? I'm retired. What did you do? I repaired radios. Worked at it for 30 years. Started back in the days of the old Crosleys, Atwater, Kents, Farnsworths. Those were real radios. Well-built, well-designed, nothing cheap about any of them. They didn't have transistors in those days, just tubes as big as light bulbs. That meant heavy chassis, heavy transformers. And we didn't fix them by simply slapping in a new part either. We fixed the old parts. I wish I had a dime for every RF coil I rewound by hand, every IF I've rebuilt. Yeah, those were great radios in those days. Uh-huh. Is this one of them here? One of the best they ever made. Nothing like it today. How's it sound? Good, real good. Doesn't work, though, not anymore. It's just a memento. Mm -hmm. Well, you seem to know all about radios, Fred. What do you know about pills? What's a cartwheel? I don't know. How about a whitey? 
I never heard the term before. Both are street talk for amphetamine sulfate tablets. I told you, I don't know anything about that stuff. How about Thelma Benstead? Who's she? She owns that house over on Ascot Street. Oh, look, I haven't got anything to do with any house on any street. Ever been in trouble before, Fred? No, I haven't, and I'm not in trouble now. You sure about that, are you? You bet I'm sure. I haven't done anything, so you can't prove I have, no matter how hard you try. What if we want to search this place? It wouldn't worry me. In fact, go ahead, you got my permission. Fine, but listen to this first. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak with an attorney and to have the attorney present during questioning. If you so desire and cannot afford one, an attorney will be appointed for you without charge before questioning. Now, do you understand each of these rights I've explained to you? Sure, I understand them, but I'm still giving you permission to search the place. Start in here, start in the bathroom, anywhere you like. All right, Fred, fine. We'll start with your radio. Radio? Why bother with that antique? I don't know. Anybody who keeps an old-time radio without repairing it just doesn't figure to me. I didn't have the parts. You can't buy those tubes anymore. I told you I just hung onto it as a keepsake. A lot of memories there. Is that right? You're wrong about one thing, Fred. Not many memories in these. At 3.30 p.m., Fred Watkins was taken down to Parker Center. Mug shots were taken, and we requested the photo lab to give us a high-speed rush in the hope that the landlady, Thelma Benstead, could identify him as the man who leased her premises. We checked with R&I. Watkins had no previous record. Now, look, you won't find anything in my stuff, and I ain't gonna say anything, and you can't prove anything. We can prove one thing right now, possession. Well, sure, but that's all. And I got no record, so I'll get a suspended sentence. Not if we can tie you in with that factory on Ascot Street. You won't. Go ahead and try, you won't get anywhere. We think we might. Who'll say so? Somebody who says he saw me drive there? So what? I was visiting. I went to the wrong address. I stopped to ask directions. All right, Fred. Who's Michael Cooper? What? Michael Cooper, who is he? I don't know any Michael Cooper. Well, now, he wrote you a check, $200 worth. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember now. He's a guy I loaned some money to. Maybe he's the one who makes the pills. Maybe we ought to check him out. You'll be wasting your time. Well, now, we got lots of it, Fred. Suppose you tell us where we can find him. I haven't got any idea. Uh, that Ascot Street address, maybe? He hasn't got anything to do with it. Well, now, somebody you. does. Suppose you tell us who. <sighs> sure, sure. All right. I do. You leased the house? That's right. For the purpose of making amphetamine sulfate tablets? Yeah. Tell us about the big man. What do you mean, big man? I don't know any big All man. All right, Fred, your partner, then. I got no partner. I ran the place myself. You mean the entire operation was yours? You ran the whole thing? That's right. All your own idea. Look, I said it was my setup, didn't I? I said I ran the whole thing myself. You bought the machines. You ordered the drugs. You did everything. Yes, I did. I did all those things. What's the matter? Don't you believe me? Oh, we might, except for one small thing. Yeah, what's that? The man who set up that factory. Now, I doubt he'd be stupid enough to stash a bag of tablets inside a radio. Now, what do you think? Joe, see you a minute. Just got back from the Benstead woman's apartment. Showed her the mugs. How we doing? We're batting zero. Yeah? She swears Watkins is not the man she rented that house to. November 4th, 9.20 a.m., we checked in with Lieutenant Bob Kennedy. Watkins says he's responsible for the whole operation and you don't buy it. That's right. Okay, let's say you're right, and I think you are. That brings us to the next question. Why is Watkins willing to take the fall? Well, he hasn't got a record and convicted he'd pull a light sentence. You think he wants to take the rap for somebody else? That's what we think. Possible. It's done often enough. We think Watkins and whoever he works for had it all arranged, just in case we tumble to the factory. Watkins serves a light sentence and gets a big payoff from somebody. Yes, sir, that's how we see it. Makes sense, but it raises another question. Who does he work for and how do we find him? Any ideas? One, maybe. Might pay off. What do you got in mind? So far, there are only two other names connected with this deal, Smith and Cooper. And Smith doesn't take us anyplace. That's right, but Cooper's different, maybe. Watkins had a check from him in his pocket. It was drawn on a downtown bank. They gave us his home address. You run it down? No, sir, not yet, but we did check R&I and DMV. Michael Cooper drives the kind of car the Benstead woman remembers, a silver-gray charger. Go on. 
And he has a record of previous H&S violations. Sounds good, but you'll need more to tie him in. Yes, sir, but it's a start. If he's the man behind that factory, knocking it over won't sting him too bad. Yeah, we're ahead of you. He can always set up another one. 10.40 a.m. Michael Cooper lived in a Beverly Hills penthouse. His houseboy told us he could be found at a private tennis club. It wasn't hard to locate Cooper. Everybody seemed to know him. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes? You're Michael Cooper? That's right. New members? Well, welcome to the club. Let me buy you a drink. No, sir. We'd like to talk to you. All right. You hit the bar, folks. On my tab. Yes? We're police officers, Mr. Cooper. Oh, of course. I've been expecting you. Shall we sit down? I think I deserve a break. I played four sets this morning. Yes, sir. You know, great game, tennis. Keeps you young. No better way to stay in shape. You can keep your vitamin capsules and your pills. Good, clean air, regular exercise. That's the way to a full life. Yes, sir. You know, the great people, tennis players. That's because it's a social activity that requires great diligence. Attracts the right kind. You seem to have a lot of friends. Oh, it's just a title. I was elected club president last month, purely an honorary position, but it is gratifying. Now, gentlemen, I know you didn't come out here to discuss tennis with tennis players. Tell me, what can I do for you? You know a man named Fred Watkins? Of course I do. And I'm sure you know that. You wouldn't be here otherwise. There's no need to be coy. I believe in being perfectly frank with everybody, and I like people who return the compliment. When did you see Watkins last? Oh, uh, seven or eight days ago, we met for lunch. But I talked to him on the phone this morning. I intend to provide legal counsel for Fred. Tell us about the house on Ascot Street. Well, what do you want to know? You don't deny knowing about it? <laughs> Certainly not. Why should I? I've committed no crime. That house was used to manufacture drugs. Do you know that? Amphetamine tablets. I know. Fred told me that this morning. I was absolutely appalled. You'd think a man Fred's age would be wiser. If I'd known that's why he wanted the house, I never would have signed the lease. You put the lease in your name, did you? That's right. I had to. You see, Fred, unfortunately, has a long record of bad debts. He was sure the owner of the house would never have rented to him. You were just doing him a favor, is that it? Precisely. That's your story? Of course. It's the truth. You paid the rent. You also wrote him a check for $200, is that right? That's correct. You wondering why? Well, there's an excellent reason. Fred and I were in the Army together, and on one occasion, he saved my life. After that, of course, we became the best of friends, and we've been that way ever since. Always ready to help each other whenever the occasion arose. In short, gentlemen, I'll do anything for Fred, and he'll do anything for me. He can go to prison for you. Why, yes. Now that you mention it, I'm sure he would. Now, do you have another question? I'm sure I have an answer for it. You used the name Smith on the lease. Why? Well, that's my legal name. No, it is, really. Michael Cooper Smith. I got dreadfully tired of so many raised eyebrows each time I used it. I became simply Michael Cooper. But let me assure you, Smith is still my legal name and the one by which, under law, I must sign all legal documents. Everything's strictly legal. Of course. I wouldn't have it any other way. And I know you wouldn't. <laughs> Friday, November 7th, 4 p.m. Three days had passed. So far, our investigation had turned up only one disproving fact. Neither Cooper nor Watkins had served in the Army. Joe, Bill, I'll give it to you straight. I just got back from the DA's office. While you were out in the field, I got a call from the county jail that Fred Watkins felt targeted. I went over to see him. He gave me a full cop-out. What do you have to say? According to Watkins, he talked Cooper into loaning him money. He also talked Cooper into renting that house for him. But Watkins set up that factory all by himself. Leaving Cooper in the clear. If that goes before a judge, Watkins will be convicted of everything he confessed to. He'll establish the fact that he was the only one involved in setting up that factory and the only one connected with its operation. And you know what that means. Yes, sir, we do. We'll have one fine time connecting Cooper with the crime afterwards. And even if we did, I can hear his lawyers now. They'd say one man had already confessed to the charges we were bringing against Cooper. They'd point out one man was already convicted on those charges and was serving time as a result. That's it. If the evidence we had was strong enough, we might get a conviction, but it wouldn't amount to much. Cooper would be out on the street in no time. Free to set up another pill plant. We need that evidence now, Joe, today, before Watkins goes to trial. We need to slam the cell door on Cooper before Watkins pleads guilty, not after. Watkins goes to trial in 10 days doesn't give us much time. I know, but it's all we've got. Make it do. Work around the clock. Retrace every step you've taken. Talk to all the witnesses again. Search that house a second time and a third time if you have to, but get that evidence. We've already gone over the house with a fine-tooth comb. Only got one thing to say to that, Gannon. What's that? Get a finer comb. November 8th, 4.10 p.m. We searched the house on Ascot Street again. The machinery and other things were scheduled to go to property division the next day and be held as evidence. Anything? Not a thing. We've gone through this entire joint three times. Yeah, I know it doesn't figure, does it? What's that? Oh, everybody makes mistakes. Cooper's no different. 
You're forgetting something. Yeah, what's that? He might never have been here. It's still his operation. Want to hit the bedroom again? No, whatever it is ought to be right in this room. I keep telling myself the same thing, Joe, but I don't believe me. See something? Maybe. Take a look. Manufactured by Furby Limited, Orange, New Jersey. Yeah, but that machine's years old, Joe. Could have been resold three or four times. Yeah, but that hasn't. Looks like a new motor. It's just been repaired October this year. Acme Electric, Armatures Rewound, Princess Street, Santa Barbara. Well, somebody paid to have that work done. There'll be a name on the bill for the job, won't there? So far, so good. What now? Those empty bags. We've already checked them two times. Let's make it three. 5.40 p.m. We checked 674 bags. Again, we found nothing. 775, 770. Wait a minute. What's that? Oh, just some trash that was in there before. Let's check it. Looks like somebody emptied a couple of ashtrays. Some bottle caps. Pieces of paper. Looks like a torn up calendar page. Some writing on the back. What's it say? Can you read it? One bag. And it looks like part of the word amphetamine. Let me have that. Get the rest of those pieces. Let's see if we can put something together here. Okay, there's another one. That goes here. This one over here. That's all there is, but it's enough. Using blender, mix one bag amphetamine. The formula for uppers. And it's gonna give us one more ingredient, isn't it? Whoever wrote that formula. Monday, November 10th, 1120 AM. We turned the formula we found over to SID. Officer Tom Evans, their handwriting expert, was ready to give us his findings. Any comparison? See for yourself. Compare the A in dollar with the A in amphetamine. Notice the shading in each. Notice the pen lift before each starting stroke. The overlap of the upstroke and the final downstroke in each. Now look at the D in dollar and the D in blender. See the loops in the vertical strokes? And notice how the downstrokes fail to reach the horizontal plane before making the starting stroke of the next letter. The same thing happens with the eyes in mix and the signature. The downstrokes fail to reach the horizontal. Also, both resemble inverted Vs, and the fact that neither has a dot is significant. What's your conclusion, Tom? I'd say the check signed by Michael Cooper and the formula were written by the same man. Joe, Bill, Tom? Lieutenant? Tom's made his comparison the handwriting checks. In my opinion, it could be argued. It won't be. Take a look at these replies to your wires. New Jersey, Furby Limited reports selling a number of used machines to Michael Cooper Smith. Santa Barbara, Acme Electric repaired a motor for a Mr. Michael Cooper. That does it. We got a case. Only one more thing we need. Michael Cooper Smith. Pick him up. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On March 5th, trial was held in Department 184, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The court found the accused, Michael Cooper Smith and Fred C. Watkins, guilty on two counts of violating Section 11911 of the Health and Safety Code, possession of dangerous drugs, and guilty on two counts of violating Section 11912 of the Health and Safety Code, manufacturer of dangerous drugs. The penalties for such violations are terms in the state prison of not less than one year and not more than three on each count, Section 11911, and not less than one year or more than five on each count, Section 11912. <laughs> 